Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste in Music, and today is the long-awaited sequel to Songs That Age Poorly, my most successful topic video ever. Okay, this thing's popping off right now. So, it's only right that we catch in on the sequel. Now, what exactly is a song that aged poorly? Well, there's a couple of things that can possibly contribute to a song aging poorly. One, the song was about something that maybe more information came out about the person or, or the band or something, and then you look back at that song and you're like, maybe it's unlistable now because of the extra context given. Or, maybe the sound of the song just sounds absolutely horrible and it is not done well with time. Or maybe just the person sucks. Who knows? Either way, Songs that age poorly. Let's get started. Simply, I asked you guys in the community tab what you think is a song that aged poorly, and here are your guys' answers. There is a song called New York City's Like a Graveyard by The Moldy Peaches. The album that this song was on was released on September 11th, 2001. With that in mind, the song is a very strange listen. It's possibly one of the most poorly aged songs of all time, and the worst part is it aged poorly on the very same day it was released. That sounds like a hell of a coincidence. All right, let's see what it is. Let's give it a shot. This song takes place less than a year after the September 11th terrorist attacks. Okay. Yeah, it seems to just be specifically about the fact that you can't really make it in New York City anymore, uh, unless of course you're slinging coochie. And I'd say the worst thing that's aged about this song is the use of the word retarded. But that's about it. It's just one of those weird coincidences where a song talking about New York City and graveyards came out on 9-11. That's about it. All right. Also because nobody said it yet, Treat You Better by Shawn Mendes. It was criticized a lot back in the day, but now it's extremely bl nice guy vibes that people have not picked up on, on before. It has aged even worse for me. Not only did I enjoy the song, though I confess on still liking numerous other songs by Shawn Mendes, but I dedicated it to a girl who I was sweet on because she had a boyfriend who absolutely was not toxic in any way. <laughs> I don't know, the song was bad on release. Has it really aged that much worse? I mean, it did not come out that long ago. I, I don't know. I don't really know if this one technically you could say is aged poorly because I, I think it was pretty bad and criticized on release. These fucking chords, dude. Jesus. I won't lie to you. The biggest sin of this song is it's boring and slow and then it's like the payoff still sucks. I mean... Wasn't this like a number one hit also? I know I can see. Can you song's catchy as shit. I hated this song for forever. I hated this song when it was on the radio. I hated it when he sings, better than he can. But the song was popular for a reason. It's kind of catchy. But the song was popular for reasons. Screw you, Tina. It's your fault that I said some shit like this. I would never say the phrase, it's, it was popular for a reason before you. Okay, I'm blaming my fiance. Seriously, this. Who have I become? See, the thing is about a song like this, I feel like it's only sort of controversial because it's successful. If this song was never big, nobody would ever think, oh, this kind of sounds like some sort of incel anthem. Because that's not what it was designed to be. And listening to it now, while it's not popular, I'm like, huh, if this was just like a deep cut on an album that no one ever pointed out, I wouldn't think, wow, this is, uh, this is a really big you know, controversial statement. I really think it's just because this thing was all over the place. Um, funny enough, I actually think this song is probably aged better because th now that the smoke is kind of cleared, this thing isn't really anything special. Uh, isn't it? Alvin and the Chipmunks' Japanese Banana. As much as I hate to dunk, uh, dunk on the, the most influential music act of all time, those lyrics and instrumental are the most racist crap I've heard in a minute. Brace yourself, Brad, from ARTV. Now, I listened to Banana Man by Tally Hall. That would be my suggestion. Actually, you know what? Let's 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 first do my suggestion, okay? The gentleman, Colonel P. T. Chester Whitmore is proud to present one more chapter. Tally Hall is Banana Man, I think, has aged horribly just because the accent they're doing, everyone would like to say, Oh, there's nothing racist about that. It's racial, not racist, but I say, what the fuck does that even mean? Chester Whitmore is proud to present one more chapter. You see Banana Man hopping over on the white 
Demon Dice type intro, actually, though. Yeah, there's something about this that I don't even, I don't even need to hear no fucking bullshit story about how this whole thing was blah, 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 blah. Look, as a casual listener, this shit sounds fucked up, and that's all that matters to me, okay? I don't, I don't, this, this song, it's not a good song. These are five white boys doing some weird shit like this. I think it just sounds extremely weird and uncomfortable. Uh, isn't it? Alvin and the Chipmunks, Japanese Banana. Okay. First, first second of this song's already a bad start. You know, you hear the gong. That's how you know we're getting into some shit. The beautiful boys, the ancient land of Japan. Boy, sure is pretty. Sure. Rice, fish, and the bananas. Pearls. No, Alvin, they don't grow. I any. want a banana. I'll never bring. How the fuck you find this, William? Did you have to do that, Alvin? What? It's a good question. Did you really have to do that, Alvin? What the fuck is this? I, I, I don't even... I'm not even offended by this. Maybe it's because I'm straight and white. But this just seems like some stupid shit for a kid's show and nothing nothing more. Am I getting a call? What's that, guys? We're hungry for bananas. That is racial, not oh, racist. No, but... We like bananas. So... Here's the thing about something like this, okay? Everything has to be very uh, extreme because it's a cartoon, you know? Like, cartoons are all about, you know, very simple ideas, simple sounds, simple whatever, kind of just amplified to feel that, like just like that, cartoony, you know? Like, sure, the gong and the, and the sounds, I feel like in any other context, if it wasn't for, like, a children's cartoon, would probably feel significantly more uh, racist. But, uh, but, yeah, I think it's just racial. You know, I think it's it's just racial. It's, I think it's just adding uh, to the context of the situation rather than, uh, you know, criticizing the uh, the nature, even though they seem very critical of the fact that they don't have bananas here. Yeah, I feel like I've lost enough brain cells with this song and I don't want to talk about it further. I don't know. Make up your own mind on this one. I'm nice right now, man. I Love College by Asher Roth, a one-hit wonder from 2009 that completely embodied the white novelty rap of the time with some really clunky, on-the-nose lyrics that would never make it in a hit song today. There's also a really weird part where he tries to promote consent with, while also giving really bad advice about condom usage. Okay, sounds interesting. Pause! Alright, this lyric video is already, you can tell this thing is aged poorly. This thing must have come out. Also, what is this? Just a lyric video channel? from 2009 that has like a million subs it's true it really is look at that this person just makes like windows movie maker um lyric videos and has a shitload of subs i'm nice right now okay I, I feel good first of all if this really did come out in 2009 okay the first thing i notice is this beat does not sound like it came out in 2009 it sounds like they're trying to uh, very much sound like the something that came out of the 90s I danced my ass off and had this one girl completely naked. Oh, Thirsty Thursday and Tuesday night I... What's that Thirsty Thursday? Did he say Thirsty Thursday? Hold on, guys. It's time for a palate cleanser. You know what I'm saying? I think you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? You guys think you know bad music. You don't know the first thing about bad thirsty, music. Thirsty Thursday. Okay? You don't want to talk about bad frat songs that age poorly. <laughs> Sweet mercy. What is this? This is the greatest AJR song of all time. Thirsty Thirsty Thursday, dude. Look, this song is aged worse than the one we were just hearing. The last one was bad, but this one came out six years afterwards. Think about that. Six years later, okay? I'm telling you right now, I've been very desensitized. It takes some really bad shit to really get me, okay? I love AJR. I learned to yodel because of this. Get fucked up. I'm next on the table. You're getting wasted. Woke up today and all I can say is I love women. Hey! I love college. Hey! And don't have sex if she's too gone. When it comes to condoms, put two on. Fuck is a John. Also, he's saying wear two condoms. You used to refer to a thing that needs... Wait, what? So what do you mean? That's bad condom usage? As far as I'm concerned, he's saying practice extra safe sex. Is that what you're talking about? Why not wear two? Exactly. 
Wear three condoms. <laughs> wear four condoms. All jokes aside, though, don't wear two condoms at once. That's clearly he's not talking about this seriously. I mean, come on, it's a stupid frat song. Look, I've heard much worse. Like, you're talking to the guy who has heard the worst of the worst white boy rap songs, okay? This is just frat rap, whatever. It's it's mediocre beat songs about how I love college. There's this, sure, it's aged poorly, but you want to talk about bad white boy songs? There is an album that came out a week ago that I can say will rival anything. That sounds worse than anything you can throw at me. And that's the new Crypt album. Crypt and Joey Nato. Two YouTubers who react to music saying rapper producer reacts to came together with an album. And it is so bad. Allow me to play you a song. When I went to this album, I just went to the most popular song, played it, and I was like, wow, that's really bad. It's a song that's lyrical, spiritual, miracle, miracle, talking about how he hates his haters and how everyone talks about him behind his back. But you can tell there's nothing genuine about it. A lot of people want to see me rise just so they can watch a longer fall. A lot of people want to dig in my pockets, but don't nobody want to deal with the cost. A lot of them say they love me. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people get in this. But the truth is, bitch, I get pissed off at the sound of your voice. Did it post my ass just to get to this spot for you to tell me what I should do and should not if I yeah, no, it's it's very whiny, reminds me of a Dax song, which is a story for another day, reminds me of a Tom McDonald song, which by the way, Crypt uh, loves Tom McDonald. It's true. It's true. That's, uh, that's why he makes a million videos on Tom McDonald. Anyways, yeah, this is a boring frat rap. But if you've heard one song like this, you've heard enough. Oh, right, enough of this shit. I get the point. Yeah, this song's aged poorly, but I've heard worse. Bad Boys 3, Injury Reserve. Great song, but the line about uh, going out like Kobe got me fucked up. I don't remember. Oh, whoops. Also, what's up, Ray's Dead? Oh, shit. Did it? Bad Boys 3. It sounds familiar. I feel like this song came out way before the Kobe thing. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Also, look, that the line might have aged poorly, whatever it is, but this song hasn't. This song slaps, okay? This whole this whole mixtape slaps. All right, go check this thing out. This is called Floss by Injury Reserve. Okay, yeah, no, that line definitely aged horribly. Uh, mostly because apparently this line is specifically about his uh, ending of his basketball career. Um, but, yeah, the entire context of the song really changed. However, it does seem like, and of course, uh, Richie, I, I believe Groggs, yeah, Groggs is the, the member of Injury Reserve who had a really tragic passing during the pandemic. Um, I think this song, Honest to God, would be even more of a, a strange coincidence if it was Groggs who uh, said this line, which is probably a really grim thing to say, talking about this uh, coincidence like it's some sort of you know, miracle stars aligning, but regardless, yeah, the line still is aged pretty, pretty strangely, because, yeah, the context, much like you can say with the uh, Biggie Small song about how he says, blow up like the world trade, right? How that wasn't necessarily about the 9-11 attacks, but with time, it all of a sudden sounded like it was. I feel like this is the exact same situation. So, yeah, a bad coincidence, exactly. Um, really interesting example, because no one could have really predicted what happened with Kobe, so, yeah. Good example, though. This song still slaps. Go check it out. J. Cole's No Role Models has a very specific line about certain relationship goals. That Jada will... That Jada and that will love aged like milk. Okay, someone explain this to me. What is this? That Jada and... And that will love? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Oh, that Jada and that will love. I read it like an idiot. <laughs> Okay, so it's that Jada and that Will Love, like Will Smith. <laughs> yeah, I want that Jada and that Will Love. Yeah, they will love each other forever. Holy shit, that is, ooh, topical gold. Ladies and gentlemen, finally some motherfucking gold here, okay? Wow. I mean, I knew J. Cole was popular, and I used Genius a lot. Seeing the 5.4 million next to the views on this lyric page is quite the number. Holy shit. First, rest in peace, Uncle Phil. I want a real love. Dark skin and ant fit. There it is, yeah. That Jada in that real love. That leave a toothbrush and keep, keep fucking my wife's mouth. That's all I gotta say about that, okay? All right, next. Game over by falling. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> not falling in reverse. Ah, 
Now you can't make me listen to falling in reverse. <laughs> the song's humor feels so outdated that I think the only way that it can be enjoyed is ironically. I'm sure the idea of voicing your problems through the metaphor of video games was something that was accepted when the song was released. But nowadays the song is just, ugh, I can't believe someone wrote this. Oh god, falling in reverse is not good. It's not good, okay? This is, uh, this is gonna be a tough listen, that's for sure. Alright, off to a good start. My life is like a video game, trying hard to beat the stage. Ah! Why? This is my kryptonite, man. I could deal with white boy college frat rap boy as soon as you do this shit. Oh god, all hell breaks loose, man. I can't take this. I can't take this shit, man. Wow. All right, we got a tough one on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Still collecting coins. Oh, you know what's aged the worst is the way this guy is singing, okay? I'm not the kind of person to bully you, but if I saw you listening to this shit, okay, all hell would break loose. My brain would go on primal mode and I would say, <laughs> start foaming at the mouth and I would throw you in a trash can. Okay, this, this shit is not okay. That being said, you're allowed to like whatever you like. As long as it's not this, of course. Hurdles going up to be a big boy. Ugh. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, we found the holy grail. This this is terrible. Oh my god, I don't even I, I I'm not even looking at it in the perspective of this has aged poorly because it just is the worst. It sounds terrible. Falling in reverse is terrible. This just is completely unlistenable. I'm growing up to be a big boy, the infantry. But your princess isn't here. <laughs> what did Ronnie go to jail for? Falling in reverse goes to jail. His friend shot someone? He went to jail because his friend shot someone? The fuck is this guy doing? Oh my god. He's done some sexual assaulting too? Yeah. Wow. He went to jail for being too much of an e epic gamer? Clear. Oh, he started a fight where a kid got shot? Yeah, that sounds... Sounds like he's got some really, really good friends in high places, I guess. Rap music sucks type beat. Don't worry, bro, I got this. Wow. Wow, that song was bad. It's, if it's not like the worst thing that's ever existed, it's the most generic shit that's ever existed. Now, let me clean your guys' palate with a good song called Game Over by Magdalena Bay. No, it's called You Lose. This is a song with a very similar aesthetic that's very recent that actually does this in an extremely uh, solid way. Anyways, go listen to that song, it's good. No, by Dodie Stevens, this song was a minor hit in the early 60s, and I don't know if the subject of the song was cute back then, because it's creepy today, because it was sung then by a 14 to 15 year old. Lyrics are uh, around the 125 mark, especially aged poorly. Alright, I don't have any context here, so we're going in completely blind. The song's called No, so who knows what it can be about. <laughs> No! Hold on a second! Oh, hell no! Oh, hell no, dude! Oh, jeez, this shit makes me uncomfortable. What the f- <laughs> Now, this is what I'm looking for, okay? We've stumbled across a classic! Holy shit! You guys hearing what I'm hearing, man? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Megan Trainer, is that you? Oh, God. Why do you torture me like this? Don't you understand English, no. Please let go. Ah! What the f <laughs> What are the comments here? Good singing, great song, uh, wonderful, heard this during my childhood. What happens at the end of this song? <laughs> oh, no, God. Bill Cosby core? Oh, Jesus. Of my hand. Alright, we got a sax solo. When she says no. Oh! <laughs> wait, a, wait a second. Hold on a second. What? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> uh, uh, hold 
on a second. Ladies and gentlemen, yo, now this, now this is, now this. Oh my God. She was 14 and, or, or like 14 to 15 when she wrote this. Now this is one of those instances where you know that like they didn't have bad intentions when making this song. However, they also probably didn't have bad intentions when they made the atom bomb. You know what I mean? They were just, you know, they were just trying to make some science. Yeah, let's, let's, let's run that back for a second. When I say no. What the fuck did I just listen to, dude? Yeah, no, this is, this is every man's dream right here. It's a girl who says no, who actually means yes. See, the, the damage of this song I shouldn't have to explain to you, but I guess I'll explain for those uh, sitting in the very back. The reason why this is damaging is because girls saying no does not mean that they want it. And this whole song is about <laughs> exactly that. Like, this is so damaging. Holy shit, where do you find this crap? Wow, this is the prime example. I, if, if we're talking about aged poorly scale, this shit's like a 10. Okay, this this is terrible. Wait, I'm so sorry, did I say something messed up? I, I think I might have just like worded it poorly. Yeah, no, this is, this what did I say? is every man's dream right here. It's a girl who says no, who actually means yes. Yeah, like as a joke, like every man's dream. That's, oh my God, you guys are ridiculous. <laughs> Brown Sugar by the Rolling Stones. How the hell did it take it until the last year for them to stop playing this song live? The comparisons in the lyrics between interracial sex and the slave trade. Whoa. Being so flipperently in a pop song, it's crazy that this was so well received for so many years. What the fuck? When I was little, my guitar teacher taught me this before looking at the lyrics, then pulled a hard left after reading them. I think the words were, oh, this is horrible, before stopping it. <laughs> we're finding some gold today, ladies and gentlemen. That's, a, that's how I feel right now. I just have a lot of question marks right now. Like, huh? Like, what? Uh, huh. Yeah, no, like, that's the thing, though, is if I didn't actually have the lyrics up in front of me, I wouldn't catch this at all, because it's like, I I wouldn't put together that he's saying this shit. I'd hear, oh, just old-ass song. What the fuck? Cold English blood runs hot. Lady of the house wondering when it's gonna s stop. Oh my god, you're right. What the fuck? Wow. Return says this song is fun. Return says this song is fun, huh? So if I had to guess and give the Rolling Stones the benefit of the doubt, I believe that maybe they're just trying to be really raunchy to like represent maybe some really fucked up like sexual relationship fantasy or something, but it's it does come off really bad. Like on a very surface level, this shit comes off horribly bad. Like really, really, really freaking bad. It's racial, not racist. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> now this is, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is one song that I, I just, I don't, I can't really find any reason to defend it. This seems very strange for sure. <laughs> We're trying hard not to rock out. I mean, the sound of this song is great. But well, let's be honest here, okay? This shit, there's a reason the Rolling Stones for, you know, who they were. The sound is really good. There's going to be that one guy in the comments who's like, man, none of these songs stage poorly. You guys are just sensitive. You guys are just soft, okay? Watch watch someone defend this shit like, like with some sort of mega long paper on why this is not actually racist, but it's actually racial, you know? Guys, let's be honest here, okay? There's no racial variety watching Brad Taste the Music, okay? We're all white straight men. That's it. Alright? And we're all white straight men who stand up and white knight for others, even though we have never faced adversity once in our entire lives. That's it. That's the Brad Taste in Music, uh, you know, demographic right there. Exactly. True. Yeah, exactly. You can barely hear what the fuck they're saying if you're not looking directly at the lyrics, and I think the raunchiness probably uh, excelled this track even more, as the people who knew what it was 
about made it a topic of controversy and the people who didn't just appreciate it for the sound. This is a weird instance where, yeah, the song's extremely offensive, though I also think that that's one of the things about this that makes it such an interesting piece of culture. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle here where, yeah, it's very offensive, it's really messed up, but if anything, it makes me actually kind of strangely more interested in the Rolling Stones as I didn't actually understand what the appeal of them was. But to know that they were making songs this strange and offensive all of a sudden makes me want to dive deeper into their discography. Does that make me a bad person? I, 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 I have good intentions with that, but it's just, it's weird to witness. It makes me a racial person, <laughs> exactly. Anyways, that's, that's it. That's, that's all I have to uh, contribute to this conversation. Hey. Crystal Castles have aged poorly. But after Alice's allegations against Ethan, and specifically Alice practice off their self-titled, gets the crown. It's so fucking unsettling to think about what she went through and her courage and how the lyrics just match with her situation at the time. What is this about, you guys? The dude was grooming her from a young age. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. See, this is this should be an interesting one. Anyways, Alice practice domestic and essay. That's uh, that's fucked up. Ah! A fuck sweet mother of God. <laughs> as loud as a motherfucker. My fucking ears, man! When the fuck did this come out? This if this did not come out exactly in the year 2009, then my life is a lie. <laughs> Close enough, 2006. Yep. Came out 2006. Alice Gla wait, hold on. Alice Glass? I feel like they just came out with an album. Oh yeah, they did. They came out with an album this year. I'm not crazy. Okay, so this is the person, Alice Glass. I didn't know they were making music for this long. Interesting. I'm sorry, this is completely unlistenable. Let's just go over the lyrics. Well, all I gotta look at is the album cover. That that does it. There you go. That's it. The album cover says it all. That's all you need to know. All right. Yep, that's it. I don't need to see anything else. Next one's the big one. The big boy! Basically everything from Daughters following what's been revealed about the singer. I'll just say Satan in the Wait since that's my favorite song from them. The horrifying atmosphere of that song and entire album are almost made uncomfortable in a bad way when you know how horrible uh, Alexis Marshall is and how he treated Lingua Ignota. Yeah, this whole situation's been really awkward for me because I actually really loved this album and I haven't revisited it since, the, uh, since everything kind of happened. It's one of those weird situations where, like, it, it's hard because you can say, oh, the art and the artist, you just gotta separate them, but the art was really fucked up. And that's one of the appeals of it, is how fucked up it was. And I don't actually know how I'm going to feel now that the validity of how fucked up everything was is even more fucked up, but not in a good way. It's like things just become more ugly and not in a uh, way that feels like it's an act anymore. So you said Satan in the Weight, and I, I wanted to actually check out the song Less Sex again, because the song's called Less Sex. Wow, I've not heard this album in a while, but the sound of it was so fucking good. I miss the sound of this shit. I'm weirdly mixed on this one because the way that everything was written on this album, at least from the way I remember, was almost written like a story. But like, it felt more like an act in, in a sort. I don't know, there's... I feel like shit has aged worse than this. Like, it sounds... It's, it's a little awkward, but I definitely think that there have been things that have aged way worse than this. I let it into my head. I let it into my heart. I let it into my bed. You hate that it still sounds good? Same. This it's, it's really messed up. The whole song actually gets some very strange, fucked up, literal context from the whole situation. In a very literal sense, yeah, everything's really fucked up. But the song was already really fucked up. And the song's even more fucked up, but in a slightly worse, kind of more literal way, it's like the curtain kind of comes down a little bit. I don't know. I feel awkward. I, I really held this place in a this album in a really uh, big spot in my heart, and I feel like I'm not really the right person to talk about this shit, because I'm so on the fence about this, man. The song plus album still sounds fantastic. It does. It's the song still sounds fantastic. It's still a great song, but it is really still difficult to separate the art and the artist. I'm one of the people that doesn't really like listening to the artists who've done stuff bad, um, 
but I feel like it enhances their music a little bit more. I know that sounds wrong, but uh, what a horrible person he is, the stuff he makes that's dark. I, I think that people feel that way about Marilyn Manson, right? I mean, I, I can't get into Marilyn Manson at all, but I, I think that some people feel that way about his music. Considering the immense amount of allegations and accounts that have been brought up against him and the themes of Lingua Ignota's recent works, I feel like it's almost completely unlikely that he isn't guilty as far as I'm aware. He hasn't really defended himself either, and it wouldn't be absolutely ridiculous for her to write that entire document if it was just a lie. There's just too much graphic detail specifically for it to be one false in my eye and two worth the time if the effort wasn't false. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to give you an opinion that you might not like, okay? This is what I like to call the opinion of the guy watching the police car chase from the television screen from the news network, okay? I am not involved directly when it comes to the crime that is being committed, but I am still witnessing the art of both the police and the person running away. Lingua Ignota's art is absolutely incredible and it's born from a really fucked up place. And this daughter's album is also, it sounds incredible and it's born from a really fucked up place. As a spectator, yeah, I think both sound good. In a way, the context makes Lingua Ignota's art even more striking and awful, and I think it makes Daughter's uh, work even more striking and awful, too. If anything, I think it makes them both more interesting. Yep, I said it. As a spectator, it's fascinating. That's it. End of story. That's all I gotta say. Is that is that the worst take in the world? Like, I'm just a spectator, you know what I mean? Like, things are fucked up. But the art was just so fucked up from both people in the beginning, and it probably would not have been born from fucked up events. They kind of mark history in a way. Here. All right. Eh. I'm glad I'm not, I'm, that's not the worst take in the world. All right. Terminal Frost by Pink Floyd. Honestly, the whole album this song came from could just be included on here as a whole, but the song I included just perfectly sums it up. The song is filled with 1980s slog with sitcom-ish saxophones and keyboards plastered all over this thing, which brings it to an unpleasant experience. I don't know what album this is from. I'm not super familiar with Pink Floyd, so this should be somewhat new for me. It sounds pretty good. This song's pretty trippy so far. I'm kind of liking it. I'm falling into it. Yeah, it sounds kind of like cheesy 80s music, but I mean, you know what? Maybe if you thought this was cool when it came out, yeah, it does sound a little bit dated, but it kind of still brings you back to that place. As far as I'm concerned, it's a bit of a time capsule, if you will. It's cheesy, but it's kind of cute. It still is a bit psychedelic. Ooh! Girl, I love you so. This is exhausting. This song is exhausting. It is. It, I feel like I'm ready to take a nap after this shit. Like I feel like it's it's turning my blood into sludge. I, I kind of hate this. <laughs> I know. I, I fucking hate this. What is this? Is the worst. Why is this so agonizingly painful to listen to? No, I actually, you know what? The longer this plays on, I'm like, wow, no, no kidding. This kind of sucks. Yeah, I feel like the longer this went on, the more un intolerable this shit is. What the fuck? Sweet mother of God, that is terrible. Wow. No, I, it tricked me at first because the production sounds okay, but my God, is the composition boring and cheesy. Yeah, you're right. Damn, this has aged horribly. Holy shit. <laughs> I know, this is the most time you could possibly waste listening to music. I actually completely agree with that take. This is a complete waste of time. Good example. A lot of recent Sweet Trip stuff has aged suddenly terribly in the wake of recent alleg- Oh, nah, fuck this. I'm skipping over this. Nope. Hey, guess what? Guess what? Alright? No. Because one day I will react to that Velocity Sweet Trip album, and we're, and we're not going down that rabbit hole yet, okay? I'm not, I'm, we're, we're not doing that yet. All right, maybe someday, but not today. I had a dream, we were sipping whiskey near. Honestly, anything by Kygo, uh, when he first burst on the scene, Tropical House was, a pr uh, was pretty much brand new and felt like a breath of fresh air. But then he got so many copycats as pretty much everyone in the EDM scene started producing extremely similar sounding Tropical House. 
to the point where it all became unlistable, and now the trends died out as a whole, and the subgenre feels extremely dated. Sucks because I actually liked a few Kygo songs, but now I think that the only song that came out of this movement I still enjoy is I took a pill. I took a pill and it bees. So Avicii, I was cool. That song slaps, by the way. I like that song quite a bit. That's when I started taking a liking to Mike Posner. I felt like he, this this era of Mike Posner was extremely likable, and I actually uh, kind of liked the album he put out during this time, just because he seemed like a really sweet personality. Yes, it's a sound that sounds like exhausted now, however, the song still slaps, especially if you're not someone who uh, comes back to this song all that much. In fact, I'd argue that the song is probably aged better because this sound isn't being done as much, so you can throw this onto a playlist and all of a sudden it brings back positive nostalgia. Okay, that's an important factor here, ladies and gentlemen. Not aged poorly, just aged exactly. I like the song still. Fuck you guys. Now, I have a question for you guys. Is this song I'm about to play Tropical House, or am I just thinking something else? Feels tropical. It might not be tropical house, but it's definitely tropical. Sweet mother of God, thank God my fucking face is exactly where it is, because right behind me is Halsey's boobs. Holy shit, I really hope that when I look over this that there is nothing that my head is right there the entire time. You oh my god. It's that one Halsey cover right behind my head. I looked, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> when the fuck did I like this? Excuse me, when did I- This had to have been an accident, right? Born to be yours, Kaigo and Imagine Dragons, this had to have been a mistake. Why is there a heart next to this song? Yo, Flash Photography! I swear I've never heard this song before. That drop really wasn't that bad! Don't still not, I'm getting rid of the heart. Fuck you, Imagine Dragons. That drop really wasn't that bad. How to get free Adobe Photoshop type beat. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Suicide Chump by Frank Zappa. The man was never what you would call politically incorrect, but the song takes it to a new level. Zappa takes the odd position of being pro <laughs> pro suicide, or at least in the way the song comes off to me. Well, go on and get over with it then. It's definitely not what you should tell a suicidal person. Yeah, I mean, I've heard enough Frank Zappa to know that, like, nobody took what he said all that seriously when it came to this shit. I don't know. I, <laughs> I've never heard somebody say, oh, Frank Zappa made me depressed because of what he said about suicide. You know? I don't know. The world is a mess. The world is as angry as it gets. Well, you think this is going to cause a little more anger? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> this is great. It sounds like some weird... <laughs> okay, this is great. <laughs> You know what? I think this has aged quite well. I think that in terms of edgy comedy like this, this is one of those situations where it's played for laughs in a way that is like, this is how you do it, rather than like in poor taste. I, I think that the people who were complaining, oh, people have just become soft. None of these songs really were a problem on the last video. This is what the, I think they're thinking of because this has somehow aged somewhat really well despite the poor nature of it. It is catchy, it's good. It's beautiful, uh, aged beautifully because it's dark humor that isn't just him yelling slurs. He has songs that are weird like that that I wasn't really a big fan of, but this one, this one's doing it for me. Yeah, I'm vetoing this one. This is great. You're in the wrong taking Zappa's lyrics seriously. Dude's compositions are some of the best, but his lyrics are often some of the most satirical. If you take any of his lyrics to heart, you either don't have a sense of humor or simply take things too seriously, or maybe both. Kind of agree with that. Freaks by Broken Side. Oh, God. Oh, 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 oh. 
No! Broken Side was a major innovator of crunk core, one of the most hated musical movements of the past 50 years, which combined 2000s electronic and hip-hop sounds with the screamed vocals of hardcore punk. Only angsty emos and scene kids ever liked it, and most people now usually uh, disregard or hate it for a very good reason. Freaks is just one of the many songs in this horrible trend. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, this, this shit was bad when it came out. Oh my god, even the synth. It's so bad, dude. It's so bad. I can't. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it goes hard in the paint. Oh sweet mother of God. Yeah, if, you, if you've heard five seconds of this song, I think you've heard enough. Brad, can you please establish whether or not you want music that sonically or lyrically is aged poorly, or do you want music where someone, something about the artist has damaged their past work? I personally think that it's going to be really weak content if... I don't ever do this, but... Bye-bye! Seventeen Forever by Metro Station. I loved this song back in the day as an eight-year-old who constantly bopped Shake It, LOL, and I still think it sounds cool. I will always have an affinity for cheesy MySpace pop. Ooh, oh, it's MySpace pop? Oh, no. Oh, sweet mother of God. That's the same, that's what Broke Inside is. It looks like Ronnie Radkin. Am I wrong? It literally looks like Ronnie. Just, oh, 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 sweet. Oh, sweet mother of God, what is this shit, man? Wow. All subtlety out the window, huh? Damn. You might as well- Wow! Wow! What a, what the fuck is this? Prince Andrew type beat? True! Alright, I gotta use the bathroom really badly. Um, while I'm gone, let's listen to something that doesn't suck. <laughs> Pretty good? Pretty good? You guys are having a good time? Bad? Well, it's about to get even worse. Because I'm gonna go take a break, and I'm gonna make you listen to Crypt. Enjoy! Have fun, guys. See you in a bit. Peace! Bust it like you, we all the girls, all the girls, yeah, give me all the cooties off for you. Show what you wanna see, what you wanna see. Bro, excuse me? I left for uh, two seconds and I heard the worst song I've ever heard in my life. And I immediately came back. What the fuck did I just hear? Let's run that back real quick. This song's called Paramount and Chill. You we are girls, all the girls, yeah, give me all the cooties. And I ain't gonna lie, it's a challenge if you're bougie, but let's Paramount and Chill, baby girl, let's make a movie. If that was not one of the worst things that I could have ever, ever turned on, holy shit, that song. Pause! It seems a little ass backwards. I don't know about you, but there's something about your 17. You're not going to be 17 forever, but we can get away with this tonight. Bro, unless you're 16 years old, this sh you better be fucking 16 years old. Because I swear to God, there is there is something very fucked up with you. If as soon as they turn 18, all of a sudden they're not accepted anymore into your uh, fucked up fantasy. Ew. That's the band? He was born 1989. Hold on. 1989. The song came out 2006. I think he was 17 years old. Is that right? He was 17 years old when this song came out? That's not creepy. It's just weird. It's just, this song doesn't work because of other people who exist. If he was 17 when this shit came out, then who gives a fuck? Whatever. Next. I mean, that, that would have been some good context, I guess. You know? Fuck Jay-Z. What's up, niggas? Yo, I know you ain't talking about Either by Nas, known as an all-time great diss track, but I can't help but laugh at how childish some of the insults are, primarily the homophobic gay-z 
Sounds like something a 13-year-old would come up, uh, and the fact that it's Nas of all people rapping, it makes it even more strange. I learned something uh, from the last video, because, yeah, it's very disappointing that homophobia was a part of hip-hop, but it was. And it was a much bigger part of hip-hop than I actually think I even understood. So, this is one of those things that I think you have to kind of understand the culture a little bit, and to give it a little bit of leeway, considering the fact that it's moved away from that. Uh, at least a, a lot of people have, so it's one of those things that can be of the time, and you can look at it like that, uh, rather than, and I, I, don't know. I mean, sure, it's something that's probably aged really bad. Also, you said either, not ether. I thought it was actually either, and ether is one of the best diss tracks of all time, okay? They literally use this as, like, you got ether, do you know what I mean? Like, that, like come on. What? Oh, well, I paused it. <laughs> a good point. Look, all right, you take away the, 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 the gay bars, okay? This is still one of the coldest diss tracks of all time. Okay. I've been fucked over, left for dead, distant, forgotten, luck ran out. They hope that I'll be gone, stiff and rotten. Just keep calling, heard it when I was asleep. Okay, I gotta admit, the Gazy and Cockafella records. Now, I'm sure it is kind of like a childish insult, but it's really funny. Cockafella records. I mean, I. <laughs> Better than big dick sucking lips. Won't you lick the late ah, veteran lips? Oh my now god. Hanging with little chase. Do a fan. A phony, a fake, a pussy. A Holy shit. Holy shit. This song is still incredible. This song is still one of the best. I mean, it is so raw. It is so emotional. It's so potent, dude. Like, I'm, one or two poorly aged gay bars is not going to make this song any less of one of the most like impactful important diss tracks of all time dude hey except for the line i rock ladies you rock fellas is kind of like one of that that's when i heard that bar that that was kind of like eh, that that was low for me i get using the f slur but you can't really look past the fact that that's just as blatantly homophobic as it can get um yeah, song's kind of aged a little, a little bit poorly, admittingly, but um, yeah, I still think that it deserves a spot in the uh, Hip Hop Hall of Fame. That's about it. I'm, I'm not going to talk about this track any longer. Bono's 1995 Hallelujah cover. What the fuck is this? At the time, it might have thought it was experimental and avant-garde, but oh my god, it has aged so badly you can't even get through five seconds. Dude, sign me up. What the fuck is this? Oh, you got, oh, you got me. You got me. Pause. Uh. It goes like this. The fourth, the fifth, I think. Ew. <laughs> this is terrible, dude. No, this literally sounds like Bono was trying not to wake up his mom in the other room. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, sweet mother of God. <laughs> that was... Oh, God. Oh, also this... Oh, shit. Dog, you gashing out the room. Nothing will ever happen where I'll ever be able to take Bono seriously. That's all you gotta know about my opinion of this shit. I, I just, I don't care about Bono. It's pretentious and boring. Blurred lines! What's up, Jeremy the motherfucking homie? Jeremy is the GOAT. Well, I don't think that this song is bad as a, as a lot of people make it out to be. And it did give us the awesome Weird Al song, Word Crimes. I've never heard that one. There's some really cre awful and creepy lyrics to that song that should have been left on the cutting room floor. All right, Jeremy. I've not heard blurred lines in forever. No, I'm not putting the music video on. And yes, I have seen the uncensored music video, in case you're wondering. Okay? Saw that when I was like 12. Everybody get up. The repeated whoa yell in the, uh, in the background, honestly, is about as annoying as the triangle sound in that uh, Usher Yeah song. It's that same level of just, okay, are, are, are we really doing this right now? Every bar. What rhymes? 
Mars with Hug Me. Hey, 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 me. Anyways, that's the. I think that that line was always bad, but that's that's the line that really stuck stuck out for me. What rhymes with Hug Me? Uh, wow. I don't know. What does rhyme with Hug Me, guys? What what rhymes with Hug Me? Slug Me, Dug Me, Born Nana. There was a song during this era that I kind of liked, and it was Robin Thicke and Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Huh. Okay, it sounds yeah. already a little bit. What the fuck is this beat? This can't be the official beat, can it? Okay, yeah. Oh, and it's got two chains on it. That's right. Huh. Okay, this part definitely sounds better with two chains shouting over it. That's for sure. Yeah, give it to me. Give it nice on the beat. <sighs> Baby, baby, you know you looking so damn fly. This is the part I like. You looking like you fell from the sky. No, I did like this song before. I wasn't like a favorite, but I really like it. I'd honestly argue this song is aged uh, also significantly terribly just because the sound of it is absolutely horrendous. Like the sound is terrible. Like it's just it's not a well mixed song. This put the stang in edge. This put the stang in edge. Okay, this beat def oh yeah, and then we got Kendrick Lamar. This beat definitely works better for uh, for hyping up two chains, that's for sure. Yeah, like I need it when I haste that. Uh, I wanna sit you where my face at, but I feel what a real fact. Like no injection, I learned my lesson. I'm walking like I talk a baby, this pedestrian shirt, sure, the panty that short could get you your cotton candy shoot. Y'all was y'all was saying flash photography because I like this song. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. I need you to please write your apologies right now in the chat, okay? That Kendrick Lamar shit, that carry, okay? Two chains came in, and Kendrick Lamar came in, and that shit was fire, okay? Come on, come on, okay? He made that beat actually not sound like the worst thing ever. It kind of worked. <laughs> Do What You Want by Lady Gaga featuring R. Kelly. Huh. I think this song uh, title and guest feature really explains why this song is aged very badly. R. Kelly singing, Do what I want with your body, um, really hasn't aged well. It's also aged so badly that Gaga had to remove it from streaming services and future album re-releases in 2020, uh, 2019. Not six years after it came out. Oh, I've heard this song before. Was this like a big song at some point? Do what you want, what you want with my body, do what you want. It's that song. Yo, I'm telling you, I listen to the radio all the time during this era, okay? Cyberpunk 2077. Do what you want, what you want with my body, do what you want, what you want with my body. I do remember this verse, man. Yeah, this was this was a pretty huge song. What did R. Kelly do? He pissed. If I didn't know that this was R. Kelly, this would be just fine. If I heard this song again and I didn't know it was R. Kelly, I would have no issues with it. But you've uh, brought to my attention that it is indeed R. Kelly, so it has aged poorly. It's a weird Schrodinger's cat situation, so I don't, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence with it. Yeah. Yeah. Pete Davidson by Ariana Grande. The song's supposed to be a love letter to Skeet while they were together and how passionate she is with it. However, let's say things didn't last long between them. I am a, oh, I'm a lover of you know songs that like are, are couples talking about how they'll live forever and then... Uh, you know, uh, separated. Yeah. I thought you were my life. Oh, 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 oh. Well, we got to see Pete Davidson react to this song. Yeah. It's a fucking one minute song. Whatever, dude. I don't care. The only thing that aged about it is the fact they're not together to, uh, anymore. I mean, sure, whatever. Fact by Eminem. Nope. Ego, I'm on my own. No rolling stone in time. Rolling Stone by Falling in Reverse. You know what? We're, we're already this deep. Let's just do another Falling in Reverse song. Why not? This song is aged poorly not because of the lyrics, but the sound. Well, actually, some of the lyrics are bad. I've got that white boy swagger or cut you open like a fucking avocado. The song is an awful mix of metalcore, rap, and dubstep. Ooh, that sounds great. Metalcore part of the song isn't terrible. The band members do have talent. However, 
We're not doing fact. However, the song is a dubstep and metalcore hybrid breakdown right after the rap verse. Yuck. Yeah, you can probably guess how this song, uh, the year this song came out, and you'd be right. 2012, I'm guessing. Dubstep sounded cool at the time, but it's incredibly dated in 2022. The song is aged like milk, but I get a good laugh out of it for how bad it is, not to mention all the drama Ronnie Radke has been in, and the not-so-good production has made uh, Falling in Reverse his music not hold up. Let's go, dude. Just let me go! I already hate it. See this? This is the prime image of what a man should be. It's funny because he really does care about haters more than more than most people do. So, you know, just so much cap, so much crap. Rap more like crap. I mean, let me make a better rap. Let's let's freestyle, okay? Bitch, when I eat my fucking wings, I always get them mild. Cause it's not that I don't like spice. It's cause that I think the taste of mild's nice. That's it. That's all I got. It's bad. Next. Wait, no, we didn't even get to the dubstep breakdown. <laughs> Oh my god. Stop. <laughs> nope. Did he just literally say spiritual lyrical? There's no fucking way this motherfucker just says spiritual lyrical. No. It's too easy. It's too easy. It's too easy. I can't. It's too easy, damn it. He said the words. He said the forbidden words. Literally, what? <laughs> I can't even believe I just heard that, dude. There's no way he just said that. I got that white boy swagger rapping right down to what he's whooping up to like a fucking avocado. Wow. No, wow, he, he cares about haters less than anybody else, you guys. Wow, he, didn't he have like domestic charges? The game fears me like a wife beater. Oh, and here we go, dubstep. Dude, falling in reverse is some of the best content. They just... Wow. Fact? We do fact? Everyone wants fact? Fine. We'll do fact. Second to last one. So I, I basically said, you give me $50, I'll continue the stream. I was going to close it. I love how there's just a song called Fuck You in the Corner. I didn't even see that. We should probably change that to something more uh, more appropriate. That way I don't get demonetized. We got something different. All right. Fact by Eminem. It perfectly encapsulates how shock and edgy rap has aged incredibly poorly and why it's mostly dead for a good reason. All right. Fact by Eminem. Everyone wants me to listen to Fact. I've heard Fact. I know Fact. Okay, I grew up on Eminem. Though I only heard this song like a few years ago. So I had no idea it existed until recently. Because I used to only listen to clean version Eminem. <laughs> Flow is still better than it usually is now. True! <laughs> Fack is horrible, but it's still better than some of the serious shit he did on Revival. Ain't that some shit, man. Ain't that some shit. Is that not the funniest thing ever? Like, think about it. Like, I would rather listen to this than some of the shit on Revival. That hurts to think about, dude. <laughs> oh, God, that's rough. Like, I'd listen to this over the song he did with Ed Sheeran. Been a liar, been a thief, been a lover, been a cheater. He's coming home with his neck scratch to catch black. Sweat jackets and dress like that. She's kept track of all this internet. It is so badly mixed. Just, happy, just shit on my last chick, and she has what my ex lacks. Cause she... Yeah, that line, oh my god. Oh my god, this album's so bad. Bring fact back. Hashtag bring fact back. Let's let's do a poll here, okay? What's worse? And I want you guys to answer honestly. <laughs> 
Well, okay, that's not what I expected. <laughs> Wow, damn, that actually surprised me. Oh, it's what is, oh, I'm so stupid. I thought it was what is better. I already forgot what my own poll was about. I already forgot what my own poll was about. This is literally the expected result, but I just th thought I said what is better instead of what is worse. Here's the poll for YouTube audience. Uh, River featuring Ed Sheeran is technically the worst song. All right, damn. I know the caretaker, Brad Dementia Arc. I did just for once find it all right for kicks, but now you find out that it. How about Orgasm Addict by the punk group Buzzcocks? What the fuck? Their compilation singles going steady is amazing, but that opener has always made me uncomfortable. Orgasm Addict, huh? Wow, Buzzcocks. What the fuck is this? Oh wow! Apparently this this shit's like top tier shit. This is this is in the what is this top albums of all time right here? <laughs> the first thing I see is Viper. That's a good sign. Wow. We tried it for once, find it all right. But now you find it's a habit that sticks and you're an orgasm addict. Sticking in the back door with dirty magazines and your mother wants to know, what are those stains on your jeans? You're in heat, you get sulk, but you still beat your meat to a pulp. You're a kid Casanova, you're no, you're a no Joseph. It's a labor of love, fucking yourself to death. You're making out with school kids, we knows in head of state. You've even made it with the lady who puts little plastic robins on the Christmas cakes. Butcher's assistants and bellhops, you've had them all here and there. Children of God and their joy, in their joy, ooh, oh, in their joy strings. What the? For what it is, it's not that bad. It's okay. I don't think it's aged poorly. I think that it was raunchy on release. Um, a strange, strange sort of song. Still, regardless, okay, uh, okay, way to end it off. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the super mega long crazy video known as Songs That Have Aged Poorly. We did a much longer recording than I expected to do, uh, which is awesome. That's good. All right, we got lots of great footage. Uh, I'm gonna get right on this. We're gonna we're gonna make this video. It's amazing. Everything's good. Life is good. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, uh, and I'll see you next time. Make sure you join the streams, and I'll see you later. Peace.